Hello, everyone. We appreciate that you're coming today. Yes, very much so. We just have a few questions. Andrew, did you need to bring anything up first? No, okay, for the moment. I'm, I'm going to have a little chat um, after the Q&A, uh, just about how people can get involved, etc., uh, on the, the various teams. Okay, great. I know a lot of people were asking us about the Occupy lecture that Jack gave. It went very well. There was a lot of people, I think it was well received. And we have a little 15 minute video. We're restricted to 15 minutes. If anybody on our YouTube channel, if anybody knows how to exceed that, that would be great because we see some people having an hour. So we made a 15 minute video and we are going to get that up today. So let's see the questions. There weren't too many. I imagine more will come in. A friend of mine is working on his own miniature version of a resource based, based upon economy, aquaponics, wind, energy, dome, homes, etc. Let's see, he, he has, he's, I guess he's gotten it through the materials of the Venus Project. And he'd like to get some technical help for his work from the Venus Project. Do you want to discuss any of miniature versions of a resource based economy that you? Uh, that's an old question, isn't it? No, I, there really was not any question. No, take they question were asking, first. how do you get technical help from the Venus Project? That's more of a personal question. Have them get in touch with us. We haven't heard from them. And do you feel that the Venus Project can miniaturize and do a miniature resource-based no. economy? No. Within the system? Not at all. You want to explain on that? Explain no, no. that? Keep okay. Going. Okay. This person is still asking about paranormal and afterlife. Do you want to discuss how you feel about that? Well, I've done a lot of work in that field, and I find that seems to be for the thousands of seances that I visited and metaphysical conferences, I never found any verification. For example, I noticed a wheel that somebody had that rotated without any electric motors or any connection to anything. But I found magnets within the wall going around in a circle, which propelled the one near the wall. So far, I've never found any self-generating power, so far. And what about the afterlife? Do you think that there's scientific evidence? I've never found any evidence of any afterlife. What is laziness? Is it genetic? No, it's learned. It's reinforced by culture. I'll go into detail in a little while. Next question. Okay, this person is asking, how is it developed and how do you get rid of it? Do you want to? I'm going to go in. Okay, it. very good. Does the Venus Project think that various cultures and cultural values are useless and shouldn't exist? Yes. Do you want to expand on that? I will later. Oh, okay, because this is really the last question that we have at this point here. So do you want to just discuss whatever you were thinking of doing? Yes. Now, you have, to, you have to listen very carefully and think about what I'm talking about. Instead of getting angry, hear me out first. First thing I want to say is there's no such thing as a scientist. Well, there are people that are scientific in chemistry. Some people are scientific in mathematics and engineering formulas. But there's no such thing as a scientist. If there were, they would never work with different nations on different value systems assassinating one another. No scientist would give any nation the atom bomb because they're not sane enough to, to do anything with it that makes sense. If you don't understand me, when you have a problem in plumbing, you call a plumber. When you have a problem in electricity, you call an electrician. You never call upon the general public. People keep asking me, well, what about traditions? Well, if everybody perpetuated their same traditions, you wouldn't have any change. Let me say it this way. Traditional values are based upon old superstitions and methods. Some elderly Jewish man asked whether I would permit tradition in the future. It has nothing to do with what I permit. 
It has to do with whether the tradition that the person advocates is useful to society or detrimental. How well the system works. So I told that this Jewish man did not understand what I was saying. So I said the Ku Klux Klan meets once a month for 65 years. Is that okay with you? He said, no. Then how do you pick which tradition will go on? You want the tradition of Christmas? You want Catholicism? Do you want Lutheran tradition? What kind of tradition do you want? And how do you select the tradition? Or who does the selecting of the tradition? When you think about that, even think about this, the fact that there's no such thing as a scientist, otherwise they wouldn't be serving their nation. Science is an international way of thinking. It has nothing to do with patriotism. It has nothing to do with American value systems. It has nothing to do with French value systems. It has to do with a way of thinking. And when I talk of scientists, I mean the unification of people in accepting evaluation and putting to test all, all ideas to see that which is valid and that which has no basis. For example, the New York Times used to have one page on astrology because the public was, in, was duped into that. There's very little in the scientific information in the New York Times. And they have, what's, what's your sign? What was the position of the planets when you were born? All this is primitive, extremely primitive, and has no basis for discussion. In other words, how do you select that tradition which is relevant and that which isn't? People want to know whether I, I would, they use me all the time, would you permit tradition? It isn't a question of permitting tradition. What are the verifications that substantiate that tradition. In a world of science, no scientist works on armaments. No scientist works on bombers or bombs or poison gas or nerve gas. These are not scientists. They're traditionalists informed by their particular public about distortions in life. On Sunday you have religion on the air. Certain religions in America. In the future, you'll have all religions, what different people believe all over the world and what some people don't believe. There'll be atheists, agnostics, every point of view. That's a democratic society. A thought-controlled society has limited information. Whenever you see news on the air, it's monitored news, what they think you ought to hear. When you think about it, please do think about this. What built up such tremendous hatred in people that they would fly airplanes into the trade center? What did we do to them to make them feel that vicious anger? You never hear that point of view, do you? Think about it. So all, all cultures are corrupt because they manage news. And all scientists are corrupt because they serve their nation. You do not serve nation you serve the well-being of humans, you take care of the environment, you do not pollute the oceans. This is what a scientist really would be. So today you have established patterns of behavior, established by culture, and which is artificial and false. I would like to see a scientific type of person. To protest the atom bomb doesn't alter conditions. To protest the cover corruption of government does not alter conditions. What is your counter-proposal? How would you do away with corruption? This is what's needed, not protesting different organizations or different systems of op social operation. Offering an alternative is what's needed very badly. Think about those things. So the system you live under has already indoctrinated you with a certain value system. Even though you studied some particular branch of science, which you may be scientific in chemistry, but not in human behavior, or human relations, or sociology, scientists of the future will be well versed in many different fields and never serve any single nation. They will serve to protect the environment all over the world and protect people 
all over the world. Never resort to armies, navies, police, or prisons. Remember, police are paid by the public, not the major corporations. Who do they serve? The major corporations. Think about that. You're paying their salary. You're paying the salary of politicians. You're paying for their medical care. They don't serve you. They serve the establishment. I hope you got something you can use out of this. If not, read our book. Look at our website more carefully. Any other questions? Or does anybody want to ask questions now? Uh, Roxanne, do you want to check your, your messages at the bottom for me, as usual? Why won't a small-scale resource-based economy work today? It will work if a nation backs it, some particular nation that says, you know, I, I like the Venus Project, I'm going to build the first experimental city without adding anything to it of my own values. It's an international point of view. If a nation won't build it, in terms of explaining to other nations the advantages of the Venus Project, we are not interested. And if you build a small community, say, of a thousand people that are working on methods of survival, if the system breaks down all over the world, which it's going to do, as it breaks down, if you have a working community, normal people will invade your community and take away your farming, your production methods, and everything else. They are not sane enough yet to perpetuate a system. It has to be done by many nations joining together and agreeing that the separation of nations is anti-science and anti-human. What you have to do is bring all the nations together and share the Earth's resources with everyone. Anything less than that will result in the same operation, depression, boom, bust, war. The same thing over and over again, because there's no real change. If you had the ability to build a city and had fundings, even though a government was not going along with it, would you do it? Assume? Yes. It would have to, we'd have to have funding behind it to, to show high tech possibilities. And the people involved in it would have to be generalist. Information in sociology, psychology, the history of civilization. If you don't have that information, if you're patriotic, it means that you don't understand the meaning of science. Patriotism has nothing to do with science. It has to do with control of human behavior. This person is saying, you gave a de definition a couple of lectures ago about what was time, and you used the example of a refrigerator. Can you do something similar to the word aberrated or aberrant? Please give your definition of the words Aberrant behavior is behavior that's not, but not based upon verifiable evidence to most people. Some people think that some people are born creative, some people are artistic, some people are musically inclined. All that is BS, bad science. It depends on your environment, how you're brought up. Beethoven was deaf when he wrote many of his wonderful symphonies. I, we got the same question here. Why don't we create a stepping stone to, towards a global resource-based economy, such as going from as much as self-sustainable community towards a city scale, so that people could see that resource-based economy can function? Because a self-sustaining community is exclusive. That means it excludes people from it. And if they're starving and, and have no work and lost their jobs, You'll have crowds of people coming in, and that will not work. What you have to do is enlighten people, just as Tesla did, just as Edison did. He had to explain people what the electric light is, otherwise they wouldn't know. People do not know how to solve problems. They merely say what is needed in the world is more understanding, more cosmic consciousness, more awareness. Well, how do you do that? If you don't put out a blueprint on how that to be accomplished or how these problems are to be solved, you leave people in midair. You don't give them the information because you really don't know the information. Again, if we had 
the funding to do a large scale re research center like we have here, I'd be all for it so we could have more people working with us directly in, in contact. I have but, nothing against that, Roxanne. Yeah, but I can't see doing what we did the way Jacques and I did it with no funding and taking a long time to do this. Even if we had many people, we didn't have much funding. It's kind of a waste of time. We'd be going backwards. We'd be doing the same thing we did before. And now we're at a stage where we can make books and videos and do things here. We'd be... We need your support. Don't put it all upon Roxanne and Jock. For example, it takes me about two and a half years to make the models for a 12 minute film. How do you do that? How do you eat in the meantime and pay your taxes? Well, now we have a lot of people helping with the animations, which is More great, so. and doing a lot of nice we products. We need your help. We can't do it alone. Again, how can we improve the resource-based planning functions, create a small, okay. Could Jack give more examples of environment shaping behavior? Okay. If you were brought up as a baby in Germany, you'd speak German. If you're brought up by, as a baby, no matter what background you have, if you're brought up in Israel by a nice Jewish family, you'd behave just like a Jewish person might. If you're brought up by the headhunters of the Amazon, if you never saw anything else, never read any books, you would be a headhunter. I believe that environment basically shapes behavior. Now that doesn't mean that you can't change your environment. If you go from one environment to another, you may become very broad-minded regarding human behavior. But if you just live in Weehawken County, you'll be him a Weehawkenite, and that's all you know. You cannot exceed your environment. The first man that tried to fly built wings that were too short, and he jumped off the Eiffel Tower, and he died. And his brother-in-law wrote, make wings larger. If you don't understand that, it means that no one ever makes a mistake in their life. They do what they think is right, they don't know, they don't have enough information of how to raise intelligent children. They don't know how to stop war. So they build armaments, armies and navies, because they have no other information. So no one ever makes a mistake. No one can build an airplane right away. They may make a propeller with the wrong pitch. You have to go through that. Edison said that he had 7,000 different elements that burnt out. Dr. Ehrlich said 606 experiments before he can grasp the basic control of syphilis. In other words, you don't make mistakes, you seek it out, you check it out. That's not a mistake. If you can ever understand that no one ever made a mistake in their life, they use the best knowledge they have. Some people beat their children because the Bible says if you spare the strap, you, you somehow lessen the advances of behavior. That's nonsense. The Bible says there'll always be war and rumors of war. That's an opinion of some asshole. It doesn't make sense. We shall always have the poor amongst us. If you thought that way, there'd be no progress at all. So you have to set the Bible aside because it was written by very primitive people in very primitive times with very little real information. Yeah, I wanted to add to that in terms of what an environment is. It's really everything that you experience, from the food you eat to the people who inspire you. Your all your in all your experiences, the role models, your heroes, your teachers, your family, your friends, the movies and the TV that you see, the gaming, the books, the subculture that you live in. All these experiences, they're all interacting variables that act upon people. You're always being shoved and react to the environment around you. So all of that shapes people. It is normal in Salem, Massachusetts to look for witches and burn them. What would happen to people if they weren't brought up with superstition and figments of people's imagination, like the positions of the planets determine your incentive and your gifts? which is ridiculous, based upon nothing. You have to learn what a nothing thing is and what a something thing is. Taking care of the environment is essential for all the world's people. It affects everybody. 
joining together with other nations, becoming one gigantic social arrangement to take care of the environment and give everyone the opportunity for education, medical care, whether you're rich or poor. There is no rich or poor in the same society. You have no money in the same society. With money, you can pay off politicians, you can sell drugs, you can open gambling houses. With all the morality in the world, without a plan or a blueprint for social operation, you cannot accomplish a sane world. We are not sane, nor are we civilized yet. As long as you have armies, navies, police, and prisons, you are not sane. Yeah, and I want to mention that all those armies, navies, police, and prisons are there to keep things as they are. They're there to back up and support the few people who have the money to make the laws, to lobby governments. You know, the lobbyists, the corporations and the lobbyists actually write the laws in the United States for the governmental people. And, you know, and then they give them money to become reelected. So it's actually the corporations themselves who are writing the laws. That's what happened with this new, that they're calling Obamacare, the new health care in the United States. The insurance companies actually wrote the laws for that as they do everything else. It's hard to believe. No government appears to care for their people. They care for the establishment. That is the forces that made people rich and powerful. And they try to teach that in schools. All your universities are false. Even though you take a science course in the university, you're still bored up to be patriotic, which is, has nothing to do with science. Science is a way of thinking about the world around us and people. If scientists really existed, they say, what makes war? Why do people kill each other? Why do scientists work on bombers and airplanes and methods of destruction, per poison gas, nerve gas? They're not scientists. They're servants of the system. Yeah, also I want to mention that all those things that shape you, that shape your, your values, all the TVs and, and, you know, the cultural influences that I mentioned, they shape you by shaping your values, the way you think about the world. And what runs the, the TV and the universities and your newspapers and your magazines are the corporate the corporate line, what they want you to think and what they want you to support. So they don't have any interference when they go to war to grab whatever resources they need. Remember this, that the cigarette ads, the government makes money on taxation of cigarettes. They produce cancer. If the government loves people, there'd be no cigarettes available or any tobacco or anything that harms people. People will be educated in the schools not how to be a cog in the wheel or an auto mechanic or an electrician or a plumber. They'll be educated in how to relate to one another. Our language would be updated. Today our language is so old you can't even talk to people. You're talking about old value systems. We need a language that's not subject to interpretation. I've said this many times. As long as language is subject to interpretation, you can have lawyers, salesmen, and all other artificialities. You can't have that with a language that has common meaning. So we need a new language, like mathematics, chemistry, physics, engineering. When engineers talk to each other, it's not subject to interpretation, if they're talking about science. Okay, there's a question. We dealt with the open source thing. I think Sven dealt with it very well. A couple of team speak lectures or talks ago, so I, I'd refer to that person who's asking about open source. Please comment on the documentary Thrive, not in regards to their their solutions, which we know is patchwork, but what did you think about Thrive, the film? If you don't take into account the resources of the earth, how much resource, how much arable land, how much water we have, that's what you have to take into account. The Earth, they say, will support 7 billion people. Oh, we have 7 billion people. But you have to do a survey of the Earth's resources and maintain a population in accordance with the carrying capacity of the environment. I've said this many times because people can't seem to grasp that concept. There is no other way 
except doing a survey and finding out what the earth can carry and maintain a population in perfect accord with the carrying capacity. Unless you improve the carrying capacity of the Earth's environment, then you can increase the population. The movie Thrive went into extraterrestrials, it went into kind of shape, sacred geometry shapes that they upheld, it went into crop circles as... Um... It's really crap circles. <laughs> There's no such thing as extraterrestrials coming here making crop circles. They would leave information you can use. They know we don't know how to treat heart disease, cancer. They will give us information to establish rapport, not cut circles in the grass. This is some asshole's concept of extraterrestrial messages. Yeah, there's a lot of projection in that. So, but the, I thought it was a pretty ex good expose in regards to what's happening in society and, and the money influences. I thought that was a good part of it, but they went absolutely nowhere. We were waiting to see what their solutions were. To me, it was almost, you know, they kept talking about conspiracy, but it was almost a conspiracy of the established government to organize the activists towards no particular direction at all, to uphold this system, try and make it a little more ethical, keep fighting for more ethics. I think this is where John Perkins is also, trying to work with big industry to make them more ethical or make them more environmentally friendly. We don't think that's going to work at all. So I saw no solutions. They were even upholding the insurance companies. So it, I felt it really went nowhere. It was shameful. We were going to see if they had heard about the Venus Project. We were going to try and get in touch with them. For better information, try to read the book, The Best That Money Can't Buy. In other words, we have a lot of books listed on our website. If you want more information in communication, agriculture, whatever you want information on, we have a lot of information available, a lot of answers to questions. So please, look into it. This person says two different people have the same question here in Venezuela. If the Venus Project wants to change language for one more accurate, like math and chemistry, what will happen with poetry? Can you ask that of Jacques? Okay. The same thing that happened to the Iceman. The same thing that happened to the people that operate trains at airports. All the trains at airports are automated. There's no conductor and no operator, and the train stops automatically at each station telling you what airline to board and what time. I think poetry is useful for those conditioned towards poetry if it has some social commentary, if it helps educate people towards a saner direction, and then it's useful. I would useful. agree with that. Yeah. I would say the same, same as all the arts. All the arts. Yeah, if it was used for something like that, but if it's used for just something abstract to detract you from the real world, like abstract painting, or it, it's yeah. really nothing. It goes nowhere. It's just a diversion. It takes up your time, fills you with nothing. Okay. It's like a television commercial. There'd be no commercials in the future. There'd be no professions in the future that do not serve the well-being of people all over the world. There'll be no salesmen, no lawyers, no investment bankers, no one that just makes profit on others who are adding nothing to the culture. This person is asking how our activism can take advantage of other information coming from the mainstream to reorient the issues, to place them on our perspective. I would say try and go to any of the Occupy movement and tell them about the Venus Project. Its direction and its purpose. Yeah, because I think a lot of those people are open for something new. They're looking for something and they're pleading with this culture to be more ethical, but they want a piece of the pie. But they really have, they really don't understand how detrimental or where the problems come from, you know, the monetary system itself. If you could explain this to them the best you can and talk about the Venus Project and have them look into it. Yes, this would be wonderful. Them, teach others what information really is and how knowledge is the only thing needed in order to solve problems. We don't need soldiers conditioned as killing machines. We need them as problem solvers. 
We have so many problems, heart disease, cancer, cystic fibrosis, diabetes. These are the problems common to all people. And this is what nations will be working on the future. We spend most of our money on armaments. And uh, a leading American, Smedley Butler, who led armies in victory, said that war is a racket. And it always has been a racket. People make millions of dollars out of war, not the soldiers, the industries that make the war machines. This is what you have to think about. And this person is asking, how realistic do you think that a movie will be able to appeal to people that are absorbed in contrary or contradictory world views? Is there a better method of appeal? Is there a way to, to test the Venus Project's claims, especially that the resource-based economy will better prevent aggression, theft, rape, or other social ills. I've been testing it for 75 years. And what I came up with is I put the test. I joined the Ku Klux Klan, dissolved it. I joined the White Citizens Council, dissolved it. And joined the Flat Earth Society and dissolved one of them in New York. But I put everything to test of the Venus Project before we presented it to the public. This is what we were doing, not presenting it right away, but putting things to test to check it out. I think this person might be asking, you know, putting to test building a resource-based economy. You really can't build a resource-based economy within the monetary system, not a technologically advanced resource-based economy. And that's what we're talking about, using technology so people don't have to work anymore and updating society and total city systems so you, you can live without pollution and aggression and a waste of energy, all that's involved in a resource-based economy. If you think you can build a little hand-tooled community and represent a resource-based economy, this is not what we're advocating and this will not work. People have tried it for hundreds of years and it doesn't work. Also, we feel that films reach more people in the shortest amount of time. You can see what Peter's film did. It made the Venus Project known all over the world, which we you know, deeply appreciate. But we would like to, and Jacques has been talking about this for decades, we would like to do a major motion picture that reaches the mainstream because people have to know about another way of thinking. They have to be oriented differently. They have to see what they're missing. We think a film can do this. If they don't know anything about it, then they're going to believe people who are saying that it's it's a one world government, that it's it's um, you know all these ridiculous things that they say, that it's communism or socialism under a different name. You know, it's none of those things. And we think of a movie can show it very well without somebody getting up and talking and people having prejudice about that particular person or that they associate it with something else without it being represented so they can actually live it for a while and be in the future and see how it works and have a detractor in the film too to bring up all the antagonistic remarks that people have today to overcome that so a film we feel is extremely important and there has to be many films about a resource-based economy you know how there are so many films about cowboys and indians well they have to be that many and more about a resource-based economy to introduce it on many different levels to people in different parts of the country, to different parts of the world, it has to be stated differently to reach their needs. So we feel a film is extremely important. I guess they're saying, do we have to wait for the breakdown of the monetary system by itself and wait, like say, wait that government wants to move and wait until the government wants to move towards a resource-based economy while our labor as volunteers is only for information. If you have, if you want to volunteer a huge amount of funds, then we can do something else. We are not waiting. We have no funding. Jacques and I have no funding, but we, we, we never wait, sit back and wait for things to happen. We work all the time. And the more people who are working towards this, the more likely it will happen. If people from all, if say, they also say, what can people in Peru do to help the Venus Project? You can start a chapter of the Venus Project in Peru. You can help translate into Spanish information. You can hold meetings in schools and in libraries about the Venus Project. We have a lot of information that you can use to do lectures. We're going to be doing, we're hoping in the media team that people will take some of the lectures translate them, make into PowerPoints so people from all over the world can use it 
you know, we're at the early stages in a lot of ways, so we need more information and that will grow so more people will have more information to present. So there's a lot that you can do. Check out the different teams, check out the media teams and, and the other teams on the website, join them and help make information as well. So we're never waiting. <laughs> yes, this is true. We're, we're, in, in fact, I've mentioned too, we're make, uh, I'm making a documentary. We're working, we're, we're trying right now to find other script writers. We're working on that aspect as we're trying to gain money, the nonprofit. We don't touch that money at all. That goes to script writers and other things, hopefully, to promote the film so we can get some major backing elsewhere. But in the meantime, I'm doing a, a documentary, might be about 45 minutes, on what is the Venus Project. Hopefully, we'll get that translated into different languages. And um, so you can give that out for free, among other materials we have on the website that you can give out for free. How do you justify consumption of animals which show they do not wish to be enslaved? And that also is part of the educational process. You have to educate people as to the value of raising a cow. How many people can you feed? How much detrimental effects does a cow have on the environment? What kind of effects does it have on air pollution? After you gather all that information and after people are educated to understand the difference between the vegetarian diet without plants having artificial coloring, artificial flavoring, and artificial seed manipulation by genes without sufficient studies, they cannot evaluate that. They have to be educated in the methods of science, not scientists, the methods of science applied to the social systems all over the world. The methods are the same. All people all over the world need clean air, clean water, and they need a relevant education. The rest of this person's sentence question is, the way I see it, as long as murder of any kind is seen acceptable, he's talking about animals, eating, consuming animals, then we're still on patchwork of self-destruction. That's true. In a way, I would ask this person, wait, as long as I... Okay, I would ask this person to get a book by Sir Jagardis Chunder Bose about, what was the name of that? Living and Non-Living. That's very complex. Yes, but in course. terms of advocating even an, even plant life, <laughs> he, he goes into how plant life has more, quote, feelings and ability to react to pain. different stimuli and, and to pain more so than animals or, or humans. So to live on this planet, even in, in the wild, animals are eating other animals, even even plant life has pain, and if you if you call plant life an animal and something else that uh, you know, I mean non-animal and it's, something it's else. It's not has easy to describe all <laughs> aspects of the Venus Project. There are people that think that nature is harmonious. Look at the nature itself. Every plant is eaten by insects. Every insect is eaten by other animals. Every big fish swallows small fish. What are you talking about when you say there's harmony in nature? Some people come up to me and tell me they're nature lovers. Does that mean you like earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, and all of the conditions that are the disease? All that's natural. All bacteria want to live. And coughing and sneezing launches bacteria at other people. When you say nature's harmonious, what are you talking about? Are you talking about things you'd like to believe in? Or are you being honest? If you're honest, you say, I don't know whether well, nature is harmonious. I haven't done any studies in that area. I know of very few people that do studies in that area. Some doctor said to me, we have eyes to see with. So I took him into a dark room and said, see? He said, I can't unless you put the lights on. Then you can't see with your eyes. You need light to see. In other words, people don't know what they're talking about in most instances. They have to learn a whole new way of thinking the global way of thinking, where bring all people together and share the Earth's resources with one another. If you fail to do that, you'll have territorial disputes, wars, arguments. Children can be raised not to argue with one another, but to learn how to share ideas. This is what's missing in religion. They don't know how to attain that kind of behavior. 
As someone who has already heard about general semantics and even read the book Science and Sanity, do you have any recommendations regarding actual training? Have you done the training as outlined by Alfred Kozipski, and how long did it take you to acquire consciousness of ab abstracting? First of all, Kozipski never touches a system. He's just a linguist in part, and semantics is only part of the problem. That is, unfortunately, it isn't just semantics. It's the management, the intelligent management of the Earth's resources for the benefit of all the world's people. If you don't understand that as being spiritual, I don't know what is. Do you have any recommendations regarding actual training in semantics or with semantics? Study physical sciences and find out how they put things to test how they check things, accept things, or reject things, or hold things in abeyance. That aspect of the scientific method is very useful to discuss with many group meetings. As you meet with members of the resource-based economy group in your area, discuss these values. Do you think the Occupy movements are a real movement or just another trick from the same people that control the world? I don't think it's a trick. I think it's due to lack of information that the people protesting the stock market. You can't protest things out of existence. You have to show a better system. If you don't present an alternative to that system, you leave people in midair, hung up. They don't know what to do. That's why we think it's important to go down and talk to your local Occupy groups and introduce them to, to the control methods in society and why things are the way they are, and to the alternative of the Venus Project. Because I, I think they are very sincere. They've been hurt through this, this system. And, and this is what we think is going to happen to so many more people as more and more homes foreclose and people lose their jobs as well. So this is the time where people can work on things and get information out there. Jacques, can you speak about the treatment of livestock in the Venus Project? Will you have Automated, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, do you want to deal with that? Well, I think that in the Venus Project future, people will move toward vegetarian diets, undoctored food. There'll be no frankfurters, salami sandwiches, no preserved food, because they find out that frankfurters is one of the major contributions to cancer. One of the, the concepts that, that we advocate is the best nutritious food that will enable people to live longer and healthier lives. This is our major concern. So animal, animal tissue is very difficult to grow. It requires a lot of resources. It requires a lot of environmental contamination. So I think that people out of sheer wisdom and knowledge will outgrow the need for animal tissue. I think, too, that, you know, without the monetary system interfering, at, at that point, there will be a lot of research into all these things. And research and scientific inquiry that we can more accurately believe in, it's very hard today when you get research papers to know who's funding it, what agenda they're pushing. So it's hard to know and get accurate information. In a profit system. Right. Did you see Adam Curtis' documentary? No, we haven't. All watched over by machines of loving grace. If not, I think you would find it interesting. Okay. We'll try and look for that if it's on the internet. Is that the name of it? Did you see um, All Watched Over by Machines of Loving Grace? We'll check it out. Jacques, do you know any communes that got crashed by the establishment? Crashed? I'm not sure. And then we put out, I would say the information put out by the establishment tends to discourage people from moving in the cooperative direction. The system we operate under now is highly competitive. The system advocated by the Venus Project is sharing ideas, values, and inventions with others, and to benefit the lives of everyone rather than a selected few. This person mentioned, when I went to see you, you talked about a country that was interested to start the first city. 
Is that still going on? We have no definite commitment from a country, for any country, to start the first city. So far. Yeah. We've been approached from many countries and many people wanting to do cities. Nothing has happened. Nothing has come through so far. Usually it's because they don't get funding. Due to the environment, are some of us animals conditioned into consuming one another? Due to the environment, are some of us animals conditioned into consuming one another? Yes, all, all human behavior is learned. I said this many times, I'm sorry I have to repeat myself, but even the language you use, your mother said glass, table, light, over and over again, and all those words and facial expressions are picked up from your environment. If you don't understand that, when you meet a person and speak with a certain accent, you say, gee, are you from the South? Are you from Spain? Are you from Paris? Are you a Frenchman? Their dialect tells you who they are and where they've spent most of their time. I don't know what this question's really asking. It's kind of a semantic problem. Due to environment, are some of us animals conditioned into consuming one another. I would say that, <laughs> I mean, if I was going to interpret that, I would say that the free enterprise system actually has us consuming one another. We're all vultures from off of one another. You know, if somebody gets sick, somebody makes a lot of money off of it. Then if you get a, some type of a system that helps people with a sickness, yet there's somebody else in there who's making more money on it, they'll try and stop you. So we're all vultures, victims. yeah, we're all victims and vultures, not for the benefit of one another, but for those who have already established themselves in this system and have benefit from it. They control other things within the system that's not for your benefit, but for theirs solely. It takes a while to read some of these sentences. I'm going to skip the longer ones until we can shorten them since there's no dead time. Can you explain how the Venus Project is scientifically proven has there been peer reviewed? That doesn't need to be. All you do is conduct electricity over great distances and measure the losses. And you have to devise methods of high conductivity with minimum loss. The scientific method is to find methods of evaluation rather than opinions. Opinions sometimes are based upon studies, sometimes they're based upon pure, pure speculation. We have to find methods. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, in the tire industry, they put a rubber tire on a concrete wheel and run it for a long time, and then they give you the life of that tire by putting it to test. They make an I-beam for a building structure, then they load it down with weights to see whether the I-beam can support more weight if it's shaped like the letter I. In other words, they put it to test. All I'm saying is that an IQ test doesn't tell the intelligence of a person. They just tell about the environmental exposure of that person. And they're saying, how do you know that a resource-based economy will work? How do you know that a bridge will support the traffic it's designed to support from previous experience? If you don't build a cumulative record of previous experience, you don't know a damn thing. Do you think that people, if they're given everything, will grow too reliant on the machines and lose their curiosity and desire to be better, to better themselves? That's what happens in the free enterprise system. When you become involved in the business world, all you accumulate is money, property, and power profit and power, and that does not help people. It just helps you and your group. Well, when you use a washing machine or you use a cell phone, that doesn't deter you from questioning things. You don't lose your curiosity because you rely on a um, washing machine instead of going down to the stream and washing your clothes. When you're free... Technology doesn't hurt people. All this business about Hey, Fresco, you want to give people things for nothing. How many of you out there worked on the telephone, the electric light, the automobile, the airplane, transportation? You got all that for nothing, just being born in a highly technical civilization. You didn't make any of those things. It doesn't hurt you 
to get things for nothing. You got the atmosphere, the earth, the oxygen you breathe. You didn't work on that. Trees produce that. So you get all that for nothing. Getting things for nothing does not hurt people. What hurts people is the myths concerning how we get things. The artificiality of the society you live in, beauty contest, commercialism, all that's terrible for human behavior. The military, the concept of killing machines, the concept of nuclear weapons, all that is harmful to people. This person asked more questions. Also, what will happen when a machine breaks, say, a century into the Venus Project economy and no one knows how to fix it because it is also all it has always worked automatically? I think you've been watching too many science fiction movies. When you use machines to work things automatically, you free people. The educational process will be much different in a resource based economy. You won't learn a particular profession and just get a job and learn nothing else people will be will be given will excel and be given curiosity and and how to you know expand on this curiosity and get answers that they need people are deadened today when they have to go to school get a job to make money and they're just so tired they can't learn anything else even if they were interested in art or science when they were younger, or mathematics, and they couldn't get work from that, and they'd go out and buy it and, you know, get an education and take on some monotonous job that they don't like, all their curiosity is wiped out. Their whole humanity is wiped out. This will be quite different in a resource-based economy when people are free to get education continuously in life, and they'd be educated to do so and encouraged to do so and participate in the system. and invent new things and learn new things and you know everything that they do goes back into the system to improve the lives of others so that becomes automatically reinforcing it's not at all the way you're talking about it so you have mindless people that are walking around just doing leisure and depend on a particular machine to run their whole society this is a ridiculous notion okay i guess that's it those other two questions that were longer, I'll have to deal with later and shorten them. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have anything else? Did you finish the ones off in your chat at the bottom, Roxanne? Yeah, all except for a couple of them. I'll go back. They were just too long to try and read and and see wh where the question was. Yeah, I'll find that with a couple of them as well. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we could take a few questions, a couple of questions, right? Yeah. I've got a couple more coming through right now, actually. One sec. Uh, keep an eye on your box. I'm just going to put them in there now. 23 is in there now. Yeah, I'm, I was just reading one of the questions out loud to Jacques here, um, talking about doing a game and interact in the environment and using the scientific method and does that sound feasible? Yes, very feasible. We would like to do that and that's one of our projects that Andrew is going to initiate. So we will be working on that as well using 3D animation and the 3D things that were already done. Whatever that. methods of communication work we use. Yeah, we'd like to do all that. And it's very exciting that to me that we're going to be working on those projects as well. Andrew, do you want to mention something about the magazine? I'll do a quick chat about all that stuff um, once we're finished with the q and I've got about seven or eight just coming through right now, so I'm just starting to put those into your tab at the bottom. Okay, you, sh you say the way to th change, change things is to show a better system, but this system, like the Venus Project, will threaten the actual economic system, so it's a sure thing that they won't listen. Well, I, I would say that a lot of people are listening, and what it takes is introducing this to a lot of people first. Just like any new idea, any new invention, you have to explain it to people for them to want to pick it up and do it themselves. And no, many people won't listen, but this system is breaking down. And is that's why, you know, Peter's films that came out when the system broke down, you got more people listening. And, and they'll, more people will begin to listen more and more. And even those with resources who want to do something, they will begin to listen at that point too. How do you get this idea through? How do you get to the politicians? We're really not, the, the politicians in most countries would, would not be interested at all. 
We are not concerned with politics at all. Or the Democrats, Republicans have to step down out of the way. They're in the way of social advances. A, con a country that would support the Venus Project cannot dominate the direction of the Venus Project. They can only support it if they understand it. But politicians will have no say-so in the future. The only people that solve problems are the bridge engineers, the electrical engineers. Everything that you have today, your electric light, your washing machine, your automobile, your airplane, all these things are technical. There's nothing political. So I don't know what good politics would be in today's economy. It was good a hundred years ago, but no longer serves the well-being of people. Is there any negative effects of geothermal energy that you know of? Um, the negative effects are what people project into it. We can maintain the cleanliness of the system by technical innovation. Can you speak a little more on your aquaponic farms where you can grow food on, on the, in the ocean? I'm quite interested in the scientific engineering behind this. It's very exciting. Okay. Well, it seems that the Japanese have put long extensions into the sea and put crustaceans on the extensions. In other words, they've grown on a sort of a rope dropped into the sea. And you can grow more food that way than you can depending on the sea bottom. In other words, there are many new techniques and many edible plants in the sea, which we've never really worked on. And so hydroponics is only used where nations have exhausted the soil. Where we don't have soil for agriculture, we will use soilless agriculture, air plants that grow on atmospheric and radiant energy. There are many different kinds of food that can be grown. More research has to be done in that area. It makes so much sense, a society without money, politics, patriotism, and religion, violence, and so many other things are based on this. But it's so hard for people to imagine a society without them. Why do you think that is true? Because of the heavy indoctrination and the innermost wishes of people is that there's some place where their lives will be much better so instead of calling them utopians, they invented heaven. But if you talk about heaven on earth, you discriminate against. So they put heaven up there. After you kick the bucket, everything works out all right. It's just a, a, an attempt at giving people some kind of hope. If there's no hope in this life, then you'll get it in the next life. This is a cop-out. Religion is a cop-out. Religion is based on the most innermost human need, a world where the security is permanent, where death does not exist. Well, all of that is hogwash. It's put out there to satisfy people who say, look, I worked hard all my life. I have nothing to show for it. Religion is a false reward. Religion has never stopped wars. Religion has never produced more food. Religion has never produced low-cost housing. Religion is just a bunch of words which are hurled out there to placate people through this horrible social culture. You know, that's always the same question. People ask me, will there be horror movies in the future? A movie of our present-day culture will be a horror movie. How do you think that a, a movie would change the values in a world, what movie is considered the most effective in changing people's minds about deeply ingrained beliefs? Why do you think a movie is a scientific method to to change values? I've changed well, that, that, that. Doesn't the isn't it movies that make people join the army? You show movies of Japanese raping women. You show movies of Germans burning people and hurting them, and so they enlist in the army. It's a movie that does that. You can make any kind of movie. You can teach people to hate any group of people by motion pictures. Movies get to the most people worldwide in the shortest period of time. Even if you shorten that to an advertisement, why do they advertise? Because people buy their products. Why do they advertise over and over again? Because there's success in that. How do you think kids 
get their values by what, doing games, watching movies. It's, it's where they get their information. We get literally thousands and thousands of letters who have seen the Venus Project through different movies. You know, many different people who have done movies on the Venus Project. And they say it's changed their life. They were depressed. It gives them hope now. They never seen anything that put it together for them. They knew something was wrong, but they didn't know what. So, you know, constantly, if it didn't change people's values, if it didn't change people's minds or give them the new ideas, then people wouldn't make movies. They wouldn't make TV shows. And they're made for different reasons, you know, TV shows or movies. It's a tremendous method of getting out there getting information out there it's much better than having one person get up and speak at a lecture and just a few movies made against war like all quiet on the western front for every single movie made against war there's 400 pro-war so that's where you get your attitudes from the kind of movies the way we raise children in the future they wouldn't want to hurt one another they wouldn't want a machine gun you go to your Christmas shopping in department stores, you got all kinds of machine guns for kids. Where do you think they get that? Where do you think they get the ideas from? Movies. TV and movies. You know, we have a very close friend who did all the animation for the Star Trek movies and TV, and he says the same, the TV shows, Star Trek, and he said the same thing, that they get so many letters saying it changed their course in life and what they study. They went into science because of Star Trek and even some of the scientists that came to visit the set they wanted to go and sit in the captain's chair it has tremendous influence I don't understand how people can't see that this person says I'm educated in the system to be lazy to watch TV how can I get rid of that do something socially useful pull out of yourself when you start thinking of yourself you get sick mostly if you think of other people, get involved in making the world a better place. Get involved in educating people to the best of your ability. And if you don't have that ability, get hold of books and read them. We got a whole list on our website. We got a whole list of activities you can become involved in. If you're involved in yourself, you usually die alone. How much time do you think, Jacques, roughly, do you think we have to get the film out that i can honestly answer i can say if you do nothing nothing will happen the more you do the smoother the transition don't put the load on roxanne and jock you have to participate also to help bring it about yeah we're, we're doing all we can to make this happen now more so you know we're, we're meeting with a lot of script writers we're reaching out to different agencies, we're writing letters, yeah. So we're, we're working with several people now, we'll see if, if we can find, the, you know, the most important thing is right now there's a scriptwriter. we're working on getting the right person for that. Is there some rich millionaire person that wants to support the project? We know of none, <laughs> maybe you can try and reach out and find some. We think there will be more as they see that this system is not working for them and for others. Can there be a Venus Project political, political party so that people can vote it in, even though we know government is corrupt? There, there have been many people all over the world who were doing a Venus Project party. Any way you can get the information out there is good. We don't feel it would work. You want to expand on that? No. Okay. It won't work through politics. There's so much money into it. It's so corrupt. But any method to get more information out there, if it gives you a platform, good. This person saying, I think it'll bring some positive attention, yes. Everyone is currently debating the science behind climate change. I don't really know who to believe. Sometimes, especially science, the debate is affecting political process. Okay. If you don't know who to believe, just cut down on the amount of air pollution by whatever methods are now available. Yeah. What, what is your opinion on the current science of climate change? Yeah. My opinion is to do whatever you can to diminish pollution of the oceans, the rivers, the streams, stop the army from dumping spent nuclear waste into the ocean, 
the Army dumped tons of nerve gas off the coast of Miami into the oceans. As long as we continue to do those stupid things, we threaten the lives of marine life and people. Okay, I guess that's it for this week. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you very much for your questions and your efforts. Yes, thank you for, for help throughout the week and everything that you're doing. Do whatever doing. you can to help bring it about. Thank you, Jack. And spending your time uh, going through everyone's questions. Thank you, everyone, for coming and listening. Uh, I hope you all got something out of that. Uh, I'm just going to do a little chat now about the the teams, how you can get involved, projects, etc. Uh, some news on the TVP magazine project which we're working on, uh, and just just other relevant bits and bobs to do with the the teams. Okay, so first up, uh, TVP magazine. This is a a, a TVP core writing um, project that we started uh, just at the beginning of this month. Um, there's a small team of us working on it. Uh, Daniel, who's in the chat room here with us, is developing the actual website for the online magazine. Uh, the plans on this magazine are that we will start off with a quarterly online magazine where we will have all of the, the various team news, news from the Venus Project, uh, interviews with Venus Project and also with team coordinators, project coordinators. Uh, we'll have technical articles from various companies around the world um, dealing with scientific and technical research uh, and development throughout the world. Lots of really interesting stuff will be on this, this magazine. The website will be tvpmagazine.com, so www.tvpmagazine.com. Uh, we're aiming at a January release for this online magazine and the plan is that within hopefully within the first year of doing these these quarterly issues uh, that we'll be able to get a publishing company interested in actually publishing a, a physical magazine um, around the world so that's that's the aim with that project uh, if you'd like to help out with that project check out tvpactivism.com there's an event there for uh, helping out with questions for the various interviews which you know we, we need as soon as possible really we want to get some of these interviews up uh, by the end of December obviously if we're trying to get a release for, for January so that'd be good if you could help out on that uh, there's a sync in document that we're using for that which you can find on the TP activism website other than that team news we're looking at starting the architectural team in January uh, that's been postponed because we've had to uh, move on to other projects and get other projects up and running, such as the magazine, for example. Uh, we're going to be spending some time on the, the marketing team, getting that um, up and running as well, with various, various projects, uh, although the media contacts team's already doing really well. Uh, thanks to Sheena on that. If any of the other coordinators have got anything else they'd like to add, uh, as far as their teams are concerned, etc., please feel free to after I've finished here. I think that's pretty much it from me. Just one other thing on the quick note on the, the TeamSpeak. Uh, as you know, there are lots of changes going on on TeamSpeak at the moment. Uh, we're trying to streamline it so that people have a more structured environment to come to to learn from uh, rather than a free for all mad UFO crazy, you know, crop circle talking rooms, etc., uh, which we feel is probably not very beneficial to people coming to the Venus Project for the first time. So we're, as I say, we're, we're working on structural changes to TeamSpeak, so please bear with us with those. If you've got any questions on that, please email me at admin at thevenusproject.com. I'll try and answer them. Also check out the Venus Project's TeamSpeak page, which is www.thevenusproject.com slash TeamSpeak. Uh, and all the latest updates on the TVP TeamSpeak structure will be posted up there, as well as in the descriptions of the rooms, etc. on TeamSpeak. Pretty much it from me. Thanks everyone for coming. 